what's going on guys it's your boy so here bringing us a video here today bring guys an after effects tour record shown very cool animated stream graphic designs and you guys know we do some transition screens i thought it'd be really cool to like to do another one it's been a while since i did another one of these things and i kind of want to do more i'm just not entirely totally sure how much you guys want to see them um most likely you guys are watching this video right now the the download link of the one that you guys see right here is in the description for you guys to download fully and then of course something's in the video equals a secret download which mostly be the uh ai file that way you guys can change your colors mess around with the speed if you guys want to and all that good stuff um without being said this is this is the transition real quick just right here right now let's go all right so i think that's pretty cool i mean it's like a really quick nice one second like it's like 1.2 seconds if you guys care to know but in the sense when it comes to uh transitions it doesn't have to be any more than like one to three seconds i mean i think, I think three seconds is like the maximum you guys want to really go for uh, when it comes to like transition screens because i mean you're just transitioning you're not like completely just like i mean it all depends on what the scenario is right so hope you guys enjoyed today's video and uh with that being said, the only thing we're going to be really using in today's video is like the pen tool for it, learning a lot about keyframes, a little pre-composition to reverse it, um, and we're using saber effects because I'm going to show you guys one more, one more time while I'm in this uh, preview screen for you guys so you can see it. It's a super, super nice, subtle effect. So these three sort of colors that you guys can choose a color scheme of, I just chose white, gray, and black. Um, in the beginning, it turns, it is gray in the beginning, but then throughout the time, it actually turns into black. So that way it kind of has this fade into black theme. And the saber links just come in, come over here, stop right at the end. And then when it comes back, you'll see that it kind of just, you know, simply comes back out in, a, in like a quarter of the time. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. It's really cool and really freaking dope. I hope you guys enjoy it. And let's get this thing going. All right, guys, so let's go get this thing going right here right now. So the first thing I'm actually going to be doing is doing that first initial middle shape little trifecta sort of, I don't know why I always like to say trifecta when the word or the number three pops in my head, but for some reason I do. Um, like this little tricolor sort of like fading-esque looking design. I think it just looks so, so clear. I mean, you can't lie and tell me that it doesn't have this really dope pre-rendering um, subtlety effect to it. Just kind of look has a little bit of a finesse to it without just doing a random only one black one. It kind of just adds a lot of character to it. And I think it looks really, really dope. So that's the first one I'm gonna end up doing. So for that, all I ended up doing was, I'm just gonna leave this example here so we can always go back to it if necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and simply press G on my keyboard and that gives me the actual pen tool in this format. I, I press P like 500 times, that is not for the pen tool. It is G this time in After Effects. And so I'm gonna end up doing is, I'm using a lot of shortcuts throughout this, uh, throughout this video when I actually go ahead and move my screen around. So I'm holding Alt and using my scroll wheel, right? To zoom in and zoom out, by the way. So with that being said, if you see me also grab the page, I'm pressing space, as you can probably tell. Uh, when I press space, that can allow me to grab and move around. So if I have to zoom in, grab, select something over here, that is the effects that I'm using, or the uh, keybinds I'm using, which is basically Alt, scrolling up and scrolling down, and uh, pressing space and moving left and right. Just just, just, just so you know, because I know I feel like that's one thing that I'm going to be doing quite a lot in this video. Anyway, so, so okay, let's do this. So we're going to go ahead and just click on all, over here on the left-hand side. We're going to be clicking outside of the canvas. It just makes a lot th more things a little more easier and a little more like... How do you say when it comes to like actually keyframing some stuff and whatnot? I give you just a little more leeway. So I'm gonna basically click over here. Next, I'm gonna click a little bit closer toward the edge here because the the sort of effect that I'm looking for is kind of like a sort of like diagonal like this, right? So you can pretty much guess where the keyframe is gonna be just by me sort of like doing that. So in this case, just do it again, just like so with the pen tool, and then I'll click over here and I'll connect them. And now, if you guys want to go back into uh, like moving the pen tools around or the the points around with the pen tool if you guys are just simply on your pen tool still and you click on the point you can move them around so i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like move this one up a little bit i want it to be a little bit more skinny at the top and i think this is pretty good with this um on the top side so you guys use illustrator you guys know that the actual fill there's a fill and a stroke color so in this case we're gonna be doing the same exact thing here let me also move myself i feel like i'm not centered in the frame uh, it's as best it's gonna get for now um Fill, strokes, you want to do is you want to go ahead and select the word fill, okay, it's going to pop the color filter, now the color that I actually use today's video uh, is hex code 222629, it's basically a nice little off, um, it's not super black, it's nice and it's kind of like a grayish blue tone, it looks really, really cool in my case, I'm going to just fill that in right here, so you can you can uh, tell, right, the first thing you're going to end up seeing is something like this, which is very, very simple, if you want to make this more thick, I would actually do so, I'm going to go ahead and just press, double, I'm going to click on the shape, press P on my keyboard, right, not P, excuse me, G, there we go, and select the uh, point again, and then move it to the point where I'm like really satisfied with it, but not too much to play around with. I think this is as good as we're gonna get for now, but of course you guys can match around as much as you guys want to. So, now that I have this little, little simple shape here, what I can go ahead and do is actually use the actual, uh, 
I guess, the transition we're going to be using. So in this case, we're going to be using the effects. We're going to go to transitions. And it is called linear wipe. So with linear wipe, I believe the keyframe that I had was 180, I believe. is like the, uh, or 187 or some, something around that. Like 187-ish. Let me see if that's what that looks like. So yeah, so it was 187. So I kind of have this nice little sort of, um, what I'm doing right now is using my transition completion and moving this left and right to kind of see which angle it's at. So if you guys want to see, I'm at 187 right now, but if I move it around, you guys can get this different, like this might not be the best option because it's kind of like a quick fill. Um, it's not going to give you much time to actually see something going through the screen. Um, one more other thing would probably be like, you know, just kind of like, yeah, I like 187. Just I'm going to go with 187 just so you guys know. I just wanted to play around with it, with it so you guys understand what I was going for. Um, okay, so with this now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this at around 50 frames, okay? And at 50 frames, I want this to be completely done. So that's going to be at zero completion, okay? So this little stopwatch keyframe, as you guys probably know from other videos and whatnot, if you guys click this right here and you guys press on the, if you actually select the shape layer, okay? And if you press U on your keyboard, that is U, okay, gotcha, um, is linear wipe. So you can see actually all the uh, all the keyframes, all that cool stuff. So even if you had other keyframes in other different areas, if you press U on your keyboard, it will pop up every single keyframe that you guys have. And if you guys want to hide them, you can press U again. Okay. So now that I can see my one key uh, keyframe here, I'm gonna go to the beginning over here, and I'm gonna say, of course, I want my completion to not be there at first. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this, drag this all the way down to uh, 100. Um, so you're gonna have 100, and you can see when I go play it through, it'll be at zero then afterwards, right? That's just completion. Okay, so now that this is basically done, what I'm gonna end up doing is putting a nice little easy ease um, to it. So if you guys can go back to my example really quickly, you guys will be able to tell that there's this very nice smooth and sort of like, like I, I always just say the word finesse to it. Um, with that, that is basically done with the easy ease. I'm gonna basically highlight my two keyframes that we just made before, right? I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call this main shape, so don't get lost. Main shape. <laughs> there we go. So highlight the keyframes just like so. We're going to right click on one of the keyframes. It doesn't matter which one as long as all, both of them are selected. You want to go to where it says keyframe assistance and go to where it says easy ease. During this time, when you, once you press select easy ease, you'll notice that your points or your little diamond shaped keyframes turn to these little hourglasses and that allows you to go into this last tab uh, the left of your um, timeline here called graph editor. Now with a graph editor, there's two different ways you guys can do this. You're most likely going to be on value graph. Um, it's the same exact thing, but if you wanted to look like mine and get my understanding of it, just right click on the graph again and choose edit speed graph. Okay. So you're going to have this nice little graph here that kind of has like, this. always going to start off with this little U shape. What that is basically telling you is that it is, is very a stagnant, you know, speed from point to like, it's going to be like halfway is halfway, right? It's just going to be this really simple stagnant uh, sort of motion to it. But if you guys want to simply highlight these two points right here, Right, you see these little yellow lines right here. Uh, with these little anchor points, um, you just want to simply, or not anchors, handles here. You want to take one of these handles and move them to the right. So the first one moves to the right. So if I want to go over here, I'm going to show you guys what this is doing. So I'm going to go back to where it says the middle. Right, this is the middle, 25. That's perfectly in the middle. That's basically where exactly this uh, transition is also in the middle. But if I take this and move it to the right, you can see that the middle is no longer the middle anymore, right? You, you can notice that it's moved over to this side because it's basically saying it's going to be really slow. At first, as you can tell, it's further back, and then it's gonna go really, really fast at the end. So if I just wanna quickly just show you guys this again, right? Fast, or excuse me, slow, fast, right? Slow, fast. That right there kind of gives you guys really cool, like I said, like a cool little just like, just like a little flare, like a little, you know, you know what I mean? This gives you a little good good, okay? So, graph editor. <clears throat> Now, if you want to move this other side into, just for the sake of me, I always like to pull the other one in just a little bit toward the left as well. Um, it's all about the speed that you guys want to go for, but this is going to matter when we do the three color thing. That's exactly how we're going to actually speed them up in a way. So, once this is basically done, you're saying you're going to, you're going to uncheck a graph editor, <laughs> go back to the preview, and you're going to be like, okay, this looks pretty good, and I'm pretty happy with that. Perfect. First shape is done. Second thing we're going to do is make a second shape, okay? So control C on this main shape, then control V again to go ahead and paste it. Control C copies, control V pastes. So I'm going to take this second uh, main shape, throw it below this. I'm going to call this uh, shape number two, okay? So with shape number two, I'm going to go ahead and for a second here and just, ah, I was going to turn off my main shape. I'm not going to actually, but for shape number two, we're going to go back in. We're going to press U on our keyboard. Remember that. So since we copy the same exact keyframe or the copy the same exact shape, it's gonna also copy the same exact keyframe that's on that first um, shape here. So you guys notice that you're gonna when you open up your shape number two's uh, keyframes or pressing U on your keyboard, you'll see you just highlight them again. 
go back into your graph editor. So now what you want to do is you want to say you want to have the second shape be ahead of the actual gray shape. So that being said, I have to move this to be a lot faster. Now, wait, let me just before I mess up all your brains, I'm going to change this fill to a different color, right? To like a nice little gray. And I also put it below it, right? So it's actually below the main shape. But if I go back into this editor, once again, really quickly, one second, just like so, okay? Take the shape, move this toward the left. You can see the reason why I'm moving it toward the left is because I'm saying to the actual, um, I'm saying to the graph editor here that I want it to be fast and then slow to kind of all meet in together. So I can be like, hey, move it toward the left a lot, move this one toward over here. It's a little bit really further ahead, but I mean, it's still okay in that sense. I'm, I might make this in the white shape here, not the gray one, um, but I'm gonna say this is pretty good. So what happens here, if I go back to my graph editor, you'll see that the gray actually comes in first. It's the same exact thing though, but it's just messing around with the actual uh, uh, keyframe assistance with the easy ease, right? Just like so, it looks pretty good. Now, honestly as well, I might even pull this um, second shape in. Let me see what happens really quick. What if I pull this or the, the keyframe? I want to say it a little bit. I mean, no, it's not. I don't hate it. I was going to say I don't know if I like it to be there, but I'm okay. I don't want to move too much around when it comes to tutorials, but be as playful and be as just like it's just the artist in me right now. It's been like, I can change this a little bit. Um, for tutorial's sake, though, we're just going to leave it as so, okay? So we're going to do the main shape again. And with this main shape, for some reason, I'm having trouble selecting. There we go. Main shape. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take this one here, control C, control V again, drag this below shape number two. Actually, we're gonna drag this in the middle because I said I was gonna make the shape number two the white one. So I'm gonna make this a nice little offset white, just so you can see what I mean by that. We're gonna take this very quick, delete it, right? So I made that white and the main one's still the gray. So I'm gonna do that last one, which just happens to be the nicer sort of like grayish tone one that's really, really gray in our example image. So I'm gonna call this one shape number three. Okay, with shape number three here, I'm gonna turn this on for a second. I'm gonna make this one that gray tone again. I'll say right about there. I'm gonna press U on my keyboard when I select the layer shape three, just like so. Bring up the keyframes again, highlight them, go to my graph editor, go over here to this first one and bring this in just a little bit. So now all that's gonna happen is it's just gonna get basically mock and follow the, um, it, might, it might be a two bit, a little bit too dark to be like shown as a gray. There we go. Let's try that. Right, so it kind of follows that first two. I might make this a little bit more. Let me do it a little bit more. Um, take these keyframes, graph editor, take this, pull this in. Let me just pull this one in, just like so. Right, okay, okay, I like that a little better. All right, so that is basically kind of like that little S to it. So now, we're pretty much done with the actual first part, which is actually just be that first main shape that kind of comes in, and it has this really, really dope subtle effect. Now, this at this point, at this tutorial right here, uh, if you got this far, this is where you can really start focusing on what your watch color scheme to be. I went with a very simple and safe sort of gray scheme. I'm also saying to myself right now that I want this white to be finished a long time before. So I want to go back into this. I'm going to take these, and I want to say, hey, I want this to be done like pretty quick. Right, so it kind of gets there before everything else. And then if I really want to make it a little more quicker, I can even pull this keyframe in to kind of say, hey, the completion should be way done. So I'm actually pull this in a little bit more. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the gray. So that way those are already at the end when that last one comes in. Yeah, okay, I'll add that way more. So that's just, that's gonna be the first part for this tutorial. I just wanna also do this really quick cause it's just gonna make it fun. All right, transition, see, ta-da. Okay, so really quick, what I wanna do is I wanna go back over here to my main shape here, and also I wanna make this main shape, this like grayer, this darker grayer tone or bluish tone, a little bit, I wanna make it pure black actually, over time. As you guys remember in my example here, once again, we just show you guys, um, it starts off that same gray that I use as over time, it actually returns a black. So it's probably really, really subtle, you can't really tell too much. Um, but I feel like if someone were to catch on to it, it might be like, oh, it just gives that quality look to it. And I think it looks really, really good. So I want to do that one more time. And the way I did that was just very, very simply clicking on my main shape, going to my effects and presets here and choosing the word level, right? Levels, drag this right onto the word main shape, just like so. And then what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take this. I'm going to press U on my keyboard again, bring my keyframes. And I'm going to go to where it says um, histogram. So 
on the his screen, but you guys can't tell or know about it. If you just take this left or right hand side of the white and drag this in toward the left, it actually makes it black. So, of course, if it has a keyframe, it could be timed. What I'm going to end up doing is say at five frames or I'll say right about excuse me at 10 frames i'm gonna keyframe this first histogram just like so now i want to press u and u again so i can see the histogram um uh keyframe now right so it's right over here i'm gonna go over to around maybe 30 or so it kind of feels like the midway point and i'm gonna take this right hand side um right below the white of the graph little the gradient graph take it move it all the way toward the left and then basically, I'm gonna just go ahead and easy ease this as well, because really, honestly, why not? You could also easy, ease. anything can literally be easy ease. So even if, even if it's a color grade, if you want it to be fast and then slow, it can definitely be fast and slow. But I want it to be slow than fast for me, right? So I'm gonna push that in, right? Take this, see what it looks like. All right, I think that looks really good. I like how that looks. I'm gonna move this over a little bit to the right, because I want it to be great for a little longer than my example. See right about there, gray, 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 and now it's black, right? It just has a really nice little subtle grading change. And now even imagine if there was gradients capping in that, oh, this little grayish tone, I was gonna literally point to it, sorry. Um, this like grayish tone, if I had like a nice little gradient kind of following through it. Dudes, you guys can do a lot of things with this, that's why I'm fairly happy with it for me. Um, I just like transitions. I've been using them every every so now and again, you guys can see that in my videos, um, as many cuts as I really have, but you know how that goes, but yeah. Okay, so now that I have that nice little black sort of uh, fade in, I can then go ahead to this final part, or the final two parts, I guess. The last part is gonna be the saber effect. I'm gonna go ahead and right click, new, solid. This solid is gonna be pure black, so when you do color, you just wanna go ahead and just press pure black, right? Okay, okay again. So this pure black, I'm gonna drag this right below my shape number two. I'm gonna rename this. <clears throat> I'm gonna rename this uh, right come in. Okay, so with this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and take the effect great uh, transition and linear wipe once again. So with this linear wipe here, I wanna go ahead and just make sure my completion is all the way at around like 77 or so. Or I'm gonna say like 68. The reason because of this is I wanna zoom in really quickly, okay? And I want to go ahead and change my wipe angle and move this to as accurately as close to the angle that you guys had before. So if you guys remember 187, I believe if I put 187 or no, it's not going to be the same. Um, I don't know what tripping a little bit, but if you guys just move your wipe angle, just simply just kind of match and move up more in the keyframe. Right. I'm going to push this as well a little further in. And you can see it's a little bit off, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna click on 145, take my down arrow on the keyboard, or up arrow now, kind of say what looks good to me. And I mean, I think this is pretty good. The reason why the wipe angle, by the way, has changed, I was gonna say to myself, like mentally, why wouldn't the middle change of the wipe angle be the same as the wipe angle that's coming in from this side here? It's because one shape is a full entire canvas, and the other shape is this little small portion, so it's obviously not gonna work. Um, but this is as close as I'm gonna get to this like wipe angle so it shouldn't be too difficult because i can just go through right here and it'll stop right there right so it won't be too difficult okay so now that i kind of have my wipe angle it's at for me it's gonna be at 147 so you guys are copying the same key phrases as me right now um your wipe angle for this is going to be around 147 so just keep that in mind so now that i have the wipe angle i can go ahead and go back to the beginning i can take my transition completion throw this all the way at 100 which makes sure it's got, it's going to be basically completely done so this is basically being it's done but for us it's starting because we want to make sure it goes from being done to undone, which is being shown, okay? So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and just press uh, U on my keyboard, I don't keyframe or anything, but I'm gonna click on the actual traces of completion and then press U on my keyboard. So 100% in the beginning is done, it's keyframe. I'm gonna move up to around, I'll say right about, like right here is the end. I'm gonna say right about like 10 frames or so before it ends. Let's go like 15. 15 frames before it ends, so it's at 50. I'm gonna start this, uh, this sort of like completion at the 35 mark. So I'm gonna take this all the way down to, uh, not zero, can't be at zero. It needs to be right before this part happens, right? I want it to go through. I want it to be right before it goes through. So around like 53 is pretty good. So I'm just gonna stop it right at that middle point right there, right? Looks pretty good. The same thing I'm gonna do again for the actual left hand side is control CV. I'm gonna rename this to left come in. Okay, just like that. <laughs> Why did that happen? Come okay, in, please. Left, just like so. Okay, cool. With this left coming part, all I really have to do is just change my wipe angle here, so I can keep this at the same exact point here. Press U on my keyboard, right? But I have to change my wipe angle, so I'm going to simply click here. 
basically I'm trying to like kind of mock the left hand side or the, what the opposite side of the circle would be for this right here, which is right here. I want to just kind of move this over here and kind of guess that it should be right around here. Um, let's see if that works. You can see how it stops right here at the end. So that means I'm gonna have to take this left one, take my completion and move this a little further up to around 50. Okay. So now we have this nice little thing happening here. Okay. But what I don't want it to do is I don't actually want it to start at the beginning. I wanted this to start a little later. So I'm going to take these and actually move these uh, inward. I thought I wanted them in the beginning, but I'm not. So I'm just going to simply take the keyframes and move them a little bit towards the right. That will basically say I don't want this whole thing to start until I want it to start. So I want to have this happen first, and then this comes in. I think that looks a little, more, a little bit better. Right? I think we're in agreement there. This wipe angle, by the way, is a little bit too off. So I'm going to go right around here. Take this left one, and my uh, how do you say my wipe angle is not as good as I actually want it to be. So I want to actually nope, not this one. I want this one to change to around here. I think that's a little bit better, right? So now I can start seeing why my completion. Okay, so this is at fifty. This one is at fifty-three. What's going to happen here is I'm going to have to change around the speed. So I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take this keyframe here, kind of move this a little further out because it obviously needs to be a little bit further out so that these also still meet right at the end. So if you're a little bit confused on what I just did, um, I just bit my tongue. Ouch. Um, uh, end up doing is since because this shape here is a little bit more smaller, I would say than this shape here. Um, obviously because the shape in the middle is not actually completely perfect in the middle. Um, it's just completely sort of like this random esque shape. Uh, it's abstract in a way you can call it, but this shape is not as big. So the wipe angle needs to be changed. And sometimes when the wipe angle is changed, the completion has to be changed as well, which also means the delay has to also occur. Now the delay can also be done inside easy ease, but for the sake of the video and whatnot, I can also just move the actual keyframe toward the right, which basically saying delaying or kind of like, yeah, I guess you would say delaying the completion of the entire thing to be in that middle, which is basically saying, hey, if I see it right about here, this is done over here. I have to move this one to the right a little bit more so that these also meet, right? Very, very simple, nothing too difficult, just a little bit of a mindset, a little change, because sometimes it's not going to always be even up, because if your shape is not obviously completely in the middle, which in some cases, if you guys wanted to do so, then your your uh, your transitions, your completions, your wipe angles would all be sort of the similar shape or the similar um, number. However, for this, I just kind of like went for it, and it still works perfectly fine. And I think this looks really good. However, you guys can start to notice the outside shapes here are very, very stagnant. So if you guys can guess what we're going to be doing is taking these shapes here, right click, easy ease them. Now, I believe they already easy ease because I pressed control and clicked on them or whatever. I believe that easy ease is like a quick like a quick fix to it, but I didn't go into the graph editor and change it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say, hey, I want this to be a little bit quicker, a little more slower. Okay, now I'm gonna keep this in mind what I kind of did. I pushed this one in, push this one to the left, right? So I wanna do the same exact thing over here because this is also messing with, remember the, like I said just two seconds ago, is messing with the completion time. So if I go back into here, I want to kind of mimic that just like so. Now I have to go over here and see if it's still okay. So you can see it's not. I'll push this one in. That is pretty much as close as we're going to get it without having to really care too much because this is a two frame thing. If anyone actually catches that, it's going to, it's obviously not the cleanest as possible. But if anyone catches that, I mean, like, damn, but like, it's not that important. So it's okay to kind of leave that one or two second frames in right here because you're not really going to notice that in fast motion so that looks really, really good and i'm very happy with that one other thing i want to do before i actually move over to the whole saber effect is you can see this line here right now if you guys are wondering what this line actually is no worries to make a mistake it's actually shape number two and three right it's the white and also the gray so you have to actually turn these off the way i actually end up doing that was i'm gonna zoom out really quick <clears throat> what I'm going to end up doing is pressing control. I'm going to control click on both shape two and three. I'm going to press U on both of these so I can look at the keyframes here. Now I'm going to end up doing is saying, I'm going to go up to here. Um, Right around here, you can say that the white is basically almost done. So when that white gets around here, it doesn't need to be seen anymore. So I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to click on shape number three, which I believe is white. Nope, it's shape number two is white. I'm going to press O on my keyboard. Oops, hold on. Is it not O? Am I, is it P? It's P. It's not P. It's definitely O. It's definitely O, but something is not working for me here. Why? Um, I, I, mm, 
I have this happen to me before, but it doesn't really matter. All I have to do is just down click on this right here, right? Go to where it says uh, transform right here and then go to opacity. Just simply click on that. If anyone knows why, I'm not entirely sh too sure around like quick uh, around like how do you say keyboard shortcuts when it comes to After Effects. So they like really weird me out sometimes and stuff that doesn't work. If you never, if you know why, please let me know so other people can know. But it doesn't really matter. Just go under shape two, drop down, drop down again if you ha if you don't see all of them, and simply just prick our uh, find out where it says opacity and just pick on this little simple little uh, keyframe stopwatch. And then of course keyframe it, and I'll give you that your first keyframe right around there. So what I'm gonna end up doing is select this keyframe right here. I just want to see at 40. So I'm gonna do a 40, and I'm gonna go one keyframe up, keyframe it again, and then I'm gonna go to where it completes, which is right around here, right? And I'm just gonna say zero. So that's gonna get rid of that first one. So if I just quickly show you guys, what's gonna happen here is all the way up until where's that gray one at? There it is. All the way up until right here, right at that moment, it's gonna disappear right as it gets hidden. So that way, the only thing that's also missing it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that's also missing is the um, the other shape, which is the gray one. Okay. So we did the white one. I have to do the gray one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to shape number three, which I believe is a gray. Right. Uh, I'm gonna press U on my keyboard, and right around here it can start going away. So I'm gonna just go ahead and drop down, drop down again, transform. Opacity, click on it, has that first keyframe, go up one keyframe, keyframe it again, and then go to where it completes, which is right here, and throw it at zero. Very, very simple, nothing too difficult about that. So what happens here at the end, you should have no more line that, that can be seen because the shapes are below it and they're overlapping. So next part actually has to be the actual saber effect, and that's the whole final part, and after that, it's a very, very simple little trick to actually reverse it and all that cool stuff. So let's get going to the actual saber effect part, and uh, yeah. All right, guys, so for the same effect and how you guys basically do it, I don't know if I said this in any clip before. I um, almost forgot I had a light, by the way. I, I always think, like, if, if I lose sunlight, I lose video time. There's lights, dude. Um, Saber effect, okay? It's for free. It's from Video Copilot. It's in the description down below. And this part is actually fairly simple, so we also did a very... We had a, a few tutorials with Saber already, so hopefully you guys are familiar with me. If not, otherwise, it's still going to be very, very simple to uh, handle all that cool stuff. So, first things first. You want to right-click, New and click on where it says uh, solid, almost said shape layer, solid. So right click new, solid, and choose simply all good old black, right? Now really quick as well, if you guys choose black and you're on this side, please unsubscribe, that's all. Um, so we're going over here, right? Press OK, press OK again, once you choose our black solid. Now you can do one of two things, either over here in the effects and presets, type in the word saber, take this actual click, the little Lego, why is it Lego? Click it, you can drag on top of the layer just like so, or if you guys don't know where it is, it's under effects, um, once I click the solid, effects, video copilot, and saber. Okay, I'm gonna right click and just kind of call this saber one. So with this, the first thing I wanna do is get rid of the black background, of course. So we're gonna go ahead and go into where it says render settings and go to where it says composite settings, change it from black to transparent, just like so. So once you guys change your render settings and all that good stuff, you wanna go to where it says uh, your core size and you wanna go ahead and go to where it says zero frames per second. Okay, and then click on start offset, just like so and ends offset just like so. And make sure those two things are keyframe for you guys right at the beginning. And you wanna see what their keyframe, you can click the word saber one layer and press the U on your keyboard, just like so. Very, very simple, nothing, we didn't do literally anything yet, okay? So, what you can end up doing is you can change your presets. So this is what the preset I used, which was narrow bright. Um, it's kind of like simply just a simple old kind of like narrow bright kind of strip. I wanted mine to be more like simplistic and all that cool stuff. So I kind of went with like a narrow bright strip okay so but there's a lot of different ones you can guys you can really go for like electric electric is really dope uh energize uh energy like jesus like fusion like you can literally go through all these and like love them and hopefully like just endless possibilities that's why i think transitions that have like saber effects enabled or a uh, part of them just comes like a really just it's, it's just a dope package so i'm actually going to use energize for this example here or maybe like fire we can use fire yeah, I'll use fire. I'll change my core size to like 6. This to like 0.25. I'll change this to 0 0.06. So it's not so thick, okay? Or it's not so, uh, oh, a little more glow. Um, why not, okay? All right. So once you guys figure out all your cool settings and whatnot, just play with that and have fun with it. You want to zoom out for a second. Now, 
what you want to do is you may want to select the word saber one now to move your actual your actual line here if you try to click on it and move it that is not how it's going to work you guys have to make sure you guys click on the top left the word saber itself and that'll give you these two little anchor points so these two little anchor points you guys want to basically measure these out or not measure them but kind of like guess where you would kind of suggest the two points to be so one has to be like over here to kind of be following this line here one has to be kind of over here to follow this line right here and uh, the way you move these is move this right here just like so and move this one toward this way over here very very simple right those red lines probably didn't help whatsoever i just wanted to use them okay i'm gonna select this move this over the canvas now i'm moving i'm really i'm moving it pretty far off the canvas the reason why i don't move it close to here is you'll see in the in the in the near end of the tutorial you'll notice that it's a very very simple trick that you guys can do um to kind of mess around with your start and end offsets just kind of make them go off the screen on their own which is pretty dope so once you guys figure out the kind of line you want to be on which I think this is a pretty good line. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly happy with this. You guys can click on Saber 1, press U on your keyboard, since you have those two keyframes, right? Um, you guys go to around 40 seconds. So, your start and your end offset should both be at zero, actually. Okay? And then at 40 seconds or so, or 45 seconds, or 45 frames, excuse me, not seconds, your end offset should be at 100. Okay? So this is going to basically do is basically use that same exact direction with your end offset and uh, starting offset, and just go in that same exact direction that like that line is actually going through. So if you guys wanted to go a different opposite way, you guys could make a just really dope quick guess. You're moving your starting offset. So if you wanted to move from right to left going down, and not from left to right going up, um, you just switch the end offset or start offset. Okay, very very simple, right? So once you have this, kind of go through. Now, if you're wondering yourself, Sesso, in your example, your line or your saber here effect is going really close to the actual black brick. To do that, you can highlight these two layer points, these two anchor points, excuse me, right? The, the end offset ones. Right click, uh, uh, create, excuse me, it's just easy ease. Sorry, I can't see my mic was in the way. Um, keyframe assistance, easy ease. Click on the graph editor, just like so. And then you just set this little, the left hand side uh, uh, point really quick. Take this ha uh, handle here and move this toward the right. That'll slow it down a bit. You can take this right hand over here, move it toward the right as well, and that'll make it a little more quicker towards the end, but be a little more closer towards the actual black, which I think should be around here. So you can see how that's kind of working out. You know, it's, it's not as close as I would like it to be, but if it's that case, you don't want to move too much with the easy ease anymore, you can go back out of your graph editor, take your keyframe, and just move it a little further out. Very, very simple, actually. Okay, so once you guys have this, uh, oh, I'm a fan of that. Okay, perfect. So right around here, I want my starting offset here to be keyframed just at zero once again. So right now, the two keyframes at this one right here is zero, zero, and over here, it is zero, 100. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over a few keyframes once again, right around here. That's fine, right around here is perfectly fine. Just like five or so keyframes above or ahead, you wanna take your starting offset and move this simply to 100% just like so or 96 whatever 100 percent as long as it's off the screen okay so once you guys find that i'll move this last uh keyframe actually to 45 and then you want to do is you want to take your that second zero keyframe right that's this one right here so this is zero zero 100 take the second uh, zero keyframe move it towards the left and that'll slow it down a little bit more but it'll also give you that really cool effect where it kind of looks like it's going through and then going out right before it actually closes which is pretty cool Right? So once you have that kind of going for yourselves, you guys can just go ahead and simply control C, control V, make a duplicate of it, right? Go back to the sort of a, a nice little ahead of the keyframe or ahead of the timeline and see where you can see your line again. Saber two, click on Saber, take these and move these out again, just like so. Okay. Uh, this is gonna be a little more difficult. I would say right here is pretty good okay i'm a fan of right there so all you have to do now is if you pre-render it please a little faster I, I love i just this 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 right here is how i know exactly that my my computer is butt cheeks right now okay it shouldn't take that long dude should, come on just a little more, just a little faster um so once you see i'm going through just just you know we're just gonna wait here just a little longer are you guys subscribed yet? Because this would be a really good time. Fortunate for you, you can go ahead and just skip to the video. I have to stay here, so. Okay, perfect, cool. <laughs> I 
could have totally skipped that. Anyway, right? Very, very dope. Very, just look at that. Holy shit, that actually looks freaking clean. I love how that looks. So, last part of this, very simple, very quick. All you have to do is click on Saber 2, hold Shift, click on Right Coming In, right click, create a, where is it at? Um, Precompose, right? You want to just select this, say Series 1, whatever, I just like to make cool names, right? Series 1, all you end up doing is you want to scroll through to where you kind of see where the end is, right around here is the end. I'm going to go one frame, two frame, three frames, stop right here, take the end, push it in, just like so. Three frames of pure blackness is pure, um, is just enough like frames for you guys to switch your scenes, whether it's uh, in Twitch and or when you're editing, three frames is perfectly, you, de you definitely have to have at least two, at least two is probably like ideal. Okay, once you guys have that two keyframes, you take your series one, control C, control V, right? You wanna go ahead and right click on series one, go to where it says time, time reverse layer. You wanna select that. Then you wanna right click on the uh, series one copy again, right? And you wanna go to time again, and then go to time stretch. So right now it's at negative 100, that is exactly where the new duration is. You wanna go ahead and just like scroll your mouse wheel up to where around your new duration is at around 25, okay? And once you've done that, you guys can go ahead and press OK. And what you can do is you take this new series copy here, put it right at the end, and what happens is you now have a, a an opposite that just goes a little more faster. Now, if you guys want to make it a little more even more faster, all you have to do is just simply just shrink the, the, the amount of time once again, and then you guys can make it a little more shorter at the end. But right now, if you guys re-rendered it, you're going to have this portion here, and then it's going to be sort of like going in reverse, but a lot faster. And this is a very cool, very simple little trick to kind of make sure the entire composition gets back to the the sort of like showing your actual scene again. So with that being said, while that renders out, I know it's going to work, all that cool stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. I know it was super long. I apologize. I'm also repping my merch here today if you guys have some. Uh, all the homies that you guys, just, you guys fucking killed it. I appreciate all of you guys so very much. I appreciate all the new subscribers and all that great stuff. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and do so. Also, comment down any video you want to see me do below. Also, follow me on Twitter. I mean, there's so much stuff you can do. Um, But yeah, I just freaking love you guys. Thank you so very much. And I'll talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Try to keep smiling. Stay positive And stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. I'll tell you guys later. Just look how, look how sick that is, honestly. Oh, wait. Render it out. Control M, right? Pre uh, composition, uh, add to render queue, and you guys just pretty much save it as all your best settings. Best is perfect. And you were lied to, yeah. Uh, so it's totally editing this right now. I was like, wait a second, that's not how you render it. Um, okay, best settings is perfectly fine, sure. Um, also, make sure if you guys want to make sure you want to have a transparent background, you can just make sure you guys click this. Uh, with that being said, over on the output, you guys can go ahead and choose AVI, that is perfectly fine, but make sure you guys choose RGB plus alpha, that way the whole word of the alpha part makes sure, or makes sure that your uh, background is actually transparent. So once you guys have that checked, then you can press OK, and then you guys can render it out, and now you're good, and now I'm going to talk to you guys later, <laughs> says HQ out, peace, why did I have to get it wrong, so totally not 4 in the morning, whatever dude, forget, okay, love you.